ILL. I and I. Welcome everyone. We're so excited today to come together and celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Name Eaton GIF and the $150 million investment from Beth and Larry Geese. Yeah. And I just want to start with a huge thank you to both Beth and Larry. Uh, your commitment to making education accessible and affordable has transformed our college and our institution. Your partnership and your willingness to be so generous with not only your resources, uh, your name, which we all very much appreciate, and it allows me to wear a t-shirt on days when I normally couldn't, um, as, as well as yourselves. And I think this is one of the things that really stands out about each of you. You're here on campus, you're engaged, uh, you're interacting with the students, and it just makes such a tremendous impact on our entire Geese community. Uh, you have inspired us to find our purpose. In the Geese College of Business, our purpose is to shape purposeful leaders through transformative access to education, research, and innovation. And that is what you have given us. We've had tremendous success in delivering on that purpose. And just a little bit I would like to share in terms of the success that we've had since the naming gift. We now, scholarships are up by over 50%, over a quarter of our students. In the, our undergraduate population now have the financial assistance they need to pursue high quality business education. We've had a wave of innovation. We have a chief disruption officer and a disruption lab in a college of business, which to my knowledge is the only one that exists in the world in a college of business. We have transformed and disrupted graduate business education. And at the time of the gift, we had 874 students in our Geese online programs. Today, we have nearly 7,000. And when you talk about expanding access to education, it is just blows my mind when I think about those numbers. 894 students now is a low number of enrollment in a single course, let alone an entire program. From an excellence perspective and a research perspective, we've been able to increase our faculty by 20%, uh, which for any institution over a five-year period is just tremendous. Um, we have also transformed what our faculty looks like from a diversity perspective, uh, which is something that the gift has also allowed us to commit to. We are an inclusive culture, an inclusive community, where individuals are comfortable being themselves, right? Rocking Jordans and a sparkly blazer <laughs> on this stage. But it's about embracing that exclusivity and always making a choice for exclusivity as opposed, inclusivity as opposed to exclusivity. Exclusivity is not synonymous with quality. Inclusivity is synonymous with quality in the Geese College of Business. The other thing that your gift really has done is to inspire others to give. And it's just amazing to see the community that has grown and the community of generosity and how you've inspired others to help us achieve our mission and pursue our shared purpose. And we are so thankful for that. So today is a great day of celebration. Make sure you stay around after the interview because we're gonna have pizza, there are t-shirts, everyone loves swag, right? Just, it's a great day of celebration. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over um, and just quick introductions. So we have John Byrne, Editor-in-Chief of Poets and Quants. <laughs> Jeff Brown, the Poets and Quants Dean of the Year. <laughs> and of course, Larry Geese and also his wife Beth here in the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Well, what a joy it is to uh, celebrate something as special as this. Five years ago today, the announcement of this gift was made in this very atrium. 
But you know, every story starts with the beginning. And the beginning of this story starts with a restaurant, Houlihan's at I Hotel, where I had breakfast this morning. It was in the spring of 2017 that Jeff and Larry met for the first time. It was in the afternoon, the restaurant was empty, it was around four or five o'clock, and, and um, they, they picked out this menu here, <laughs> and they had salads, and I wonder if you had the chicken Asian chop chop <laughs> or the buffalo blue. Yeah. Let's see, let's see what we have. So what happened, what happened at that first meeting? Go ahead, Jeff. Well, so Larry and I had heard about each other through our geese colleague, Rob Metzger. Um, and uh, Rob had told me that one of the first questions that Larry will probably ask me is uh, about my why and the why of this college and what our purpose was. And I was really excited to meet Larry because I knew from the conversations he'd been having with Rob that he cared deeply about education. Um, and what happened at that meeting was uh, we sort of had a melding of the minds about the aspirations of this college and how great it could be. Um, and we didn't, we didn't talk about money. We didn't talk about any of that stuff. We really talked about the enormous impact that this university and this college were having and how much greater it could be if we got everything working in sync from our branding to our recruiting, if we could increase scholarships, if we could continue to hire outstanding faculty. And I know I left that meeting just incredibly jazzed about the future. And I, I would guess that Larry shared that view. Larry, what was your impression? Well, Beth and I have always talked about democratizing education and giving everyone an equal opportunity and giving them the chance that both of us had to get a great education. And there's no better place than the University of Illinois, right? <laughs> and so to meet Jeff, and Rob had told me a lot about Jeff, and I'd heard a lot about Jeff, but to meet Jeff and sit down and hear his vision and what he wanted for the students, and it was all about the students. That's what I loved. And it was all about creating this, this atmosphere of education, of learning, of opportunity, and giving everyone a shot at having that. And that was just exactly how Beth and I felt. And I walked away from the meeting, and I remember calling Beth on the way to class um, that I was teaching, and I know a few of you I've had class with you, and you know the class I'm talking about, Dennis and, and, and George's class. And what was really cool, I called my wife, and I was like, he is talking exactly the type of vision that we've always believed in. And that's what, you know, you invest in people, right? And the team that Jeff had built, as we started meeting more of the team that he had built, understanding the steps he was going to take, we wanted to be a part of it. And I was so excited after that meeting. I was jazzed up at class. <laughs> <laughs> and four or five months after that initial meeting, uh, you went to downtown Chicago uh, to Larry's offices to make the pitch. That's correct. What was that like? Um, you know, it, it felt a little surreal. I'd never asked anyone for $150 million before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he had it. <laughs> Nor did Beth. <laughs> <laughs> um, in order to not lose my nerve in the process, uh, we had made a little pitch deck that really walked through what we were trying to achieve, what the mission of the college was, and so forth. And somewhere in that deck, I still have a copy of it, I flipped the page, and there's the ask. You basically said, you know, we're asking you to invest in the college. $150 million was part of the ask. And then we went on to talk about the impact that it could have, because that's really what it was about. It was about how we could change lives with right. the gift. And also I asked um, if they would be willing to allow us to adopt their name for the college. Um, and I remember being very nervous when I flipped to that page. And I remember Larry didn't miss a beat. He just kept right on asking questions. He was taking notes on the, the pad and I thought- That's because hmm. I had to take it to the finance committee. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, this, this might actually work. Um, and, uh, at the end of that first meeting, he hadn't agreed, but I could tell he was really intrigued by the idea. Um, he was less enthused about the naming, 
And uh, so I agreed to come back, I think six days later, uh, for a follow-up conversation. And it was at that follow-up conversation that he agreed to the gift, still didn't agree to the naming. So there was some more work to do there. Now, when you got to the slide with 150 million on it, yeah. what was the expression on Larry's face? It didn't, it didn't change. I thought it was 150,000. Oh. <laughs> so, that was my big miss. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it didn't change. He didn't miss a beat. He just kept asking questions. He was really engaged in the conversation. <laughs> I loved what Jeff and Rob was with you that day. Yes. I loved what you were espousing as the, the mission and the vision of the college and how it was about the students. It was about each and every one of you and the people that follow you. And I think that was really key. The naming was difficult, one, because you know, everyone would mispronounce it. Jeff came back right away and said, well, it'll fit on a sweatshirt. Um, <laughs> and that second meeting, and I don't know if you remember this, Jeff, I actually came with five names of alums that I thought would be perfect yeah. for the naming. Because Jeff already had me. I'm like, I want to be a part of this. Beth wants to be a part of it. We love what you're building, and we want to be a part of it. You have me. But let's think about someone else you know, putting the naming on. You may, you may forget this part, but you also told me that uh, when you finally did agree to the naming, you said, this is your last chance to change the spelling before we go live. <laughs> exactly. But you know, the, what, I think the best advice I got was that, and it's been true, and you've all seen it. Um, I mean, you've been here for you know, the bulk of this five years. When I say you, the students, you've been here for the bulk of the five years. You've seen the excitement, you've seen the energy, you've seen the changes that are taking place. You've seen how they've made access so much better at our college and how people are talking about their why. People are talking about mission and purpose. It's a really beautiful thing. But the advice I got is it won't be your name. They will define it, the students, the faculty, the staff. They will define what it means and that's what you're gonna go out in the world to do. The impact you have in the world will define what the Geese College of Business means. And I'm so glad we're a part of this, a small part of this, but you guys are defining that name and that is your name and that is what you'll put on a resume, that's what you'll talk about, that's what you'll think about when you're out in the real world having your impact. And that's what I'm really proud of is that what the team has done with that because they've made it theirs, which is awesome. So Jeff, you leave Larry's office with your pitch deck. Yeah. You feel good about the meeting. And then Larry goes home to tell Beth that he wants to We're give 150 there, John, million dollars <laughs> to the school. What is Beth's reaction? Well, for, first she said, do we have that? <laughs> and her next question, because she's, she's not about money at all. She's about, so I kind of deal on a macro level. I love building on a macro level. She's micro. So our school on the west side of Chicago, she's teaching there every week. And I want to just give a hand to my wife. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be sitting here today because of everything you've done to support me. And the beautiful thing you did on our second date, I don't know if you remember this, on this campus, we went to the YWCA and tutored on our second date. And I'm like, wow, this woman is really cool. <laughs> and so she's an educator. She really helped me um, see this vision and help connect with Jeff's vision, which is a really beautiful thing but she's never been interested in money. So the first question was, do we have that? And the second question is, why would we give it all? And the third question, which was legit, is I don't want people knowing. And um, I knew I was in trouble the night before we did this five years ago today, when she said, hey, do you think this will be in the papers? <laughs> and uh, a buddy of mine, Ken Griffin, uh, had just uh, given like a few days before, I think, 75 or 100 million to the University of Chicago. Okay, and um, when the 150 was announced, people started giving Ken Griffin some grief that, well, Larry beat you, which you never want to compete against Ken Griffin, if you know who Ken Griffin is, um, a hedge fund magnet and an unbelievable philanthropist. But uh, what was really interesting about it is we didn't want it to be known, but the name needed to be a part of this mission that you're all on. And at the end of the day, that was a, the biggest gift wasn't the money. The biggest gift was saying, use the name. It might get rid of some of our anonymity, which is going to be difficult. But I have to say, with what you've all done, and when I say you, everyone here, including our awesome athletic department who's here too, Josh and Howard, thank you. Everything you guys have done, the energy you've created across this campus has been phenomenal. Yeah. 
And that energy you've created has wiped anything away from our personal problems that we would have from this being known. And what it's done is put front and center that the University of Illinois is on a rocket ship going straight north, and we've got our, both of our basketball and football team ranked. We've got energy <laughs> across the campus. We have people donating and saying, we want to be a part of this mission too for the best university on earth to create purposeful leaders. So let's give a hand to everybody here for what you've done. It's been phenomenal. I don't think I answered your question, so sorry, John. Uh, no, that's OK. <laughs> so, so, so Jeff, I want to go back to how you convinced Larry that it was important to have his name on the school. Um, Larry mentioned one of the reasons, but give us a fuller explanation of how you convinced him that this was an sure. important piece of the puzzle. Well, so part of it was, and we talked about this a little bit earlier today, we showed him a list of the top 20, 25 business schools in the country, and there were only two of them on there that didn't have a name. One was Illinois, and the other was Wisconsin, who had done that kind of interesting thing where they had raised money to not name the school. That's right. Uh, and the argument was basically, we need to have an identity that helps us rise above whatever issues that are happening in the state, that sort of thing, and to really, that we can really rally around. Because what we heard all the time, students were talking about these other schools, Ross and Kelly and so forth. Um, we needed to have that sense of identity, something we could rally around. The timing was perfect because we had just spent a year and a half doing all this work about who we are and what our brand is and what our message was going to be. And to be able to launch that along with the new name, the timing couldn't have worked out better. So it took some convincing, obviously. Um, but, you know, we are the Geese College of Business today, and we're darn proud of it. So. Now, now, Brooke summarized some of the incredible achievements of the school for the past five years fueled by this gift. Yeah. And I wonder if both of you might comment a little bit more broadly about the overall impact and how it's affected you individually. I mean, look around the room, not just at the people that are uh, employees who are wearing the new shirts today, but if you look around, you see an enormous sense of identity. Everything from the fact that it's on the walls, the people that are wearing their pins and their t-shirts, there's a sense of pride. People walk with a kind of a bounce in their step that really didn't exist before. Um, we have captured a sense of momentum. We're moving up the rankings. We're getting a lot more attention than we ever got before. Um, and people know about us. We are, we are back in our rightful place of being part of the national conversation about who the leading business schools in the world are. Uh, that's hard to quantify. But it, I think it's the most important thing that came out of it. And it's partly because of the financial investments that we were able to make. But more importantly, it, it is the identity, it's the brand, but it was also this vote of confidence. Keep in mind, back in 2017, we had just come off a couple of years where the state of Illinois couldn't pass a budget, those kinds of things. And it just changed the conversation. It changed the conversation we have with students. It changed the conversation we have when we're trying to recruit faculty. So it was just an enormous lift, and I am sure that Decades from now, people are going to look back to five years ago today and realize that was the inflection point. That's when we went from being a really good business school to being the world's best business school. And the best for purposeful leaders. That's yes. the difference. Mm. What, what they have done here is phenomenal. I was in um, Biff a few weeks ago and I, I grabbed a student. We were chatting and she turned their computer and she said, here's my why. So it's not about a business degree, it's not about making money, it's about having impact on the world, and each of you are defining your why. Who talks about that? And that's the leadership from this guy here and his team. Who talks about why and mission? That's what they do here, and I think that's been the most phenomenal. You can't put it in a stat, you probably right. can't quantify it, but the students here will tell you that they are literally thinking about what impact can I have on the world, and that's the beautiful part of it. Yeah. Now Larry, most donors write a check, and come for the champagne toast. <laughs> you have really invested yourself, your energy, your emotion, your intellect into the school. Uh, tell me why you're so committed to coming here more than a dozen times every year, meeting with students, attending classes, and different events. 
Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for $694 a semester, I may not have gone to college <laughs> back in my day. And I wanted to give everyone that opportunity. But coming down to campus is not just for the students, because I love helping, but I actually get so much energy when I come down here and chat with you and get challenged by you. I'm, a, I'm an accessible person, right? So people will come up and say, why did you do this? Or they'll read something our company did, or we'll chat about why I'm doing what I'm doing. They push you, and young people push us, right? They push us to ask those tough questions. They, they get us to that different level, sometimes uncomfortably, to say, wait, wh why are we doing it this way? And don't ever stop doing that because it's the push that you give us that makes change in the world. And then when you're in our position, you're gonna continue to make change in the world, which is a beautiful thing. But I learn more from all of you than I could ever impart. And I thank you for that. And some of the classes I've taught, we've had, you know, George, you know this, we've had some really deep discussions from the students. And I, I, I leave energized. The next morning when I wake up, even though I'm driving home late at night, I am energized because what you're doing and the impact you're gonna have in the world is just super exciting to me. So it's easy to come down here. As long as you keep asking me, I'll keep coming down. And uh, thank you for what you give me because you give me a heck of a lot more than I could ever give you. So we are gonna take a few questions from the audience. There are some mics out there for anyone who would like to ask Jeff or Larry a question, um, let's make it happen. I want to just say one other thing uh, that's related to what Larry just mentioned. Jeff says that whenever he has a bad day, there's one of two things that he does. He comes down to the atrium to speak with students, or he calls Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, who do we have out there who wants to ask a question? And tell us who you are first, uh, and then uh, give us your question. Oh, here we go. Hi. Yeah, you got to turn that mic on, I think. I. That's I, good. You're good now. <laughs> I am a st grad student in Masters in Business Analytics, and. This was really amazing. <laughs> this really energized the whole conversation. And my question is, what do you have envisioned for Geese now, next? Like, what's the next big thing? Oh, what's next? Oh, wow. There's... Okay, they're not gonna let you rest on any laurels no, here. No, I, oh I was gonna God. ask if we have a couple more hours, because we have a <laughs> lot going on. Um, look, we, we remain committed to the whole vision of democratizing education, to increasing access, shaping purposeful leaders. How are we gonna do that? Uh, one thing that, that Brooke and others uh, and I have been working on is recognizing that education is changing. You'll have to stop me if I go on too long. Um, you know, this idea that the only point of going to, to college to learn is to get a degree and then go off into the workforce and never have to go back and learn again, that is a really outdated model. And we believe that people are gonna need to come back and refresh skills and learn new things throughout their lives. And so we are the first college on campus. I see Wojtek here. We worked with the graduate college to produce the first graduate certificates, which are transcriptable for credit uh, ways of learning that people can come back, you know, whether they've been out of school two years, 20 years, or 50 years, uh, and continue that education. Those, that kind of more modularized content also opens up all kinds of opportunities for us to do education at scale, not just here, but all around the world with corporate partners, with countries, and so forth. So that's one of the things we're doing. To support that, a physical difference you're gonna notice is that this parking lot between us and Huff Hall, uh, we're gonna be breaking ground next spring on a new facility. That facility's gonna, um, yeah, thank you. Oh, and on that note, by the way, we received a $25 million naming gift, but as is a theme here, the donor's not prepared to let us use their name. Um, and so more to come on that. But that building, it's not about the building, it's about what it's gonna enable us to do. The new classrooms are gonna enable us to teach even more students here on campus. The new studios are gonna allow us and other colleges around us to make additional investments in online education uh, and those sorts of things. So there's a lot more to come and I'll just say stay tuned.
Okay. Do I see someone back there? Hello, uh, everyone. So we've heard all the beautiful stories from you, and it really sounds amazing. But I would like to know from you, recently our rankings went up. Um, what was the biggest challenge you faced, and how did we overcome that challenge? Because the positives are so bright, but I also want to know about that. That's a great question, because obviously uh, a lot has been done here in this five years has been truly disruptive. Uh, and it's, you know, it's hard to get that kind of change uh, to happen in a university environment, which are known to be rather bureaucratic institutions that are very slow moving. So what has been the biggest challenge? Exactly what you just said, <laughs> overcoming inertia and, and uh, traditional ways of doing things. But you know, this isn't just about me. Look around at the faculty and staff that are here today. This was a massive team effort to get all of this done. I mean, just look at what we did in the online education space. It was only, you know, we're coming up on the seventh year uh, that we launched the IMBA with about 110 or 112 students in that first cohort. You heard Brooke say we're getting close to 7,000 online students today. That took a lot of work and effort on everyone's part, getting things through the faculty governance process internally and the Senate on campus and so forth. And it's not that people are opposed to innovation, it's just that you know, we've been doing what we've been doing for 150 years and we're really good at it. And here we come along and we want to do it all very, very differently. And it just takes a lot of hard work and imagination and so forth to get that done. But I will tell you, we have been really, really fortunate in the entire time that I have been dean. We've had phenomenal leaders all across this campus. You know, the grad college with Wojtek here has been a great partner. Um, you know, Andreas Cangularis was the provost for nearly five years and was a staunch supporter of this college. Uh, our chancellor, uh, Robert Jones, has just been amazing. So it has been a team effort, but it, is, it really is just overcoming that institutional inertia uh, that has been in place for a very long time. I mean, if, if you think about it, you know, the traditional registrar's office uh, understands having an incoming class every year, once a year. And the online MBA program has five intakes, just right. that one little change. Right. It changes everything. And there are hundreds of those examples exactly. that, that we've worked on. Yeah. Someone else out there with a question? I also, while we're waiting for a question, I want to, I want to clarify something because the news is even better. You heard that we've increased undergraduate scholarships by 50%. That was just as a result of Larry and Beth's gift. With the additional giving that it has inspired and that our actions have inspired, we have now increased scholarships from 2017 by 150%. Wow. Um, we've, so that goes to show that um, our alumni have responded in really big and meaningful ways. And so a lot of the students are here, if you're receiving a scholarship, it is almost certainly due to fill in, uh, a philanthropic gift from one of our alums, uh, much of which was inspired by this major naming gift. And you anticipated that because I know that part of the uh, conversation that you had with Larry was that your gift would inspire others to give. And in fact, uh, the school has received something like $200 million above and beyond Larry's gift in these past five years. Yeah, so we just closed as of June 30th, uh, uh, the With Illinois campaign across campus. We raised $310 million as part of that. Uh, since July 1, we're somewhere in the 30 to $35 million uh, raised already this year. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that's a, a, a very big step up from kind of what historically the kind of uh, funds we had been raising uh, prior to that. That's fantastic. Okay, maybe, maybe time for one more question if there's a question out there. Yeah, right over here. Hi, um, my name's Anna. I just wanted to say like thank you, Mr. Larkis and Beth for the gift that you've given us. Um, the question that I have is, uh, do you guys believe that there's still some things that we would, that you would like to see improve with the school? Is there like any challenges that have come up? Um, and like, how do you plan on like moving forward? What would you like to see different? I would like to see everyone's college paid for through the funding that Jeff and his team have been able to bring in. I would love to see 
each and every one of you having more time to work on the impact you can have on the world and thinking through that process. And I'd love to see more of our alums come down, not only to teach classes, um, but even come down for evenings to speak. And if you've noticed, many of you have in your classrooms a former alum of the University of Illinois Business School who has had real-time work experience working with faculty to give you not only a great education, but here's what's happening in the real world. That change that Jeff talked about is so significant. The magnitude and velocity of change is so significant that we alums need to keep learning also. And so the programs that are being created uh, create really learners for a lifetime. And that's what I want to see here at our College of Business so that we can continue to give you the support and the education you need to have impact on the world. That's what I'd like to see. That's a great answer. And the only thing I would add to that is that um, we're in a fortunate position of having way more students that want to attend Geese than we have the capacity to accommodate right now. And it's not that we're turning away students who aren't qualified. We're unfortunately having to turn away kids that we know would do extraordinarily well here. So one of the reasons that we're raising scholarship money, one of the reasons we're building this new facility is so that we can really deliver on this mission of creating access for students. Our belief, and, and you heard Brooke speak to this, we want to be inclusive, not exclusive. I don't take pride in the fact that we turn away so many students. I think if you're, if you're qualified to come here and you're smart enough and you've worked hard enough to be able to come here and we know you can be successful, we want to give you that opportunity. And that's something that really distinguishes the University of Illinois as a land-grant institution from a lot of the you know, the privates and so forth, they have a different role that they play in society. Our role is to really make education accessible and that's what we're all about. So on that note, let me close. Let me thank our two guests here. Um, obviously your gift has had a profound impact on a lot of people and will continue to have a great impact on many generations to come. And, um, and Jeff and I are going to go to Hooligan's <laughs> to celebrate. Yeah. And maybe I'm going to pick out one of the salads that you picked out. It might, you know, your, your success might run off on me here. Thank you. Thank you, John. That's awesome. Hey, thank you. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, one more round of applause for John, Jeff, and Larry, and Beth. And just, just to close out, I mean, it was mentioned the University of Illinois is a land-grant institution, and what that means to me is we are charged with providing accessible, affordable education to all who desire it and are committed to pursuing it. And what the Geese gift does is allow us to embody that mission. And so when we talk about we are geese, it now is about providing accessible and affordable opportunities, and that's the tremendous impact that, that this gift has had. So thank you. Please join us for pizza in the back, uh, shirts in the corner, photo ops, and let's just have a great day. Thank you all. <laughs>